Do you ever think about the most famous people you've met in your life? Because I think about that often. Those people we meet in the airports, so we see them from afar. We go to Packers games, we go to Bucks games, and we can see these athletes and these famous people. And maybe we know famous people in our own lives as well, people that are related to us or we have some small connection to. Imagine if your uncle, though, was the Pope. This was the case for St. Charles Borromeo, whose uncle was Pope Pius IV. St. Charles came from a very noble and wealthy family from Milano, and at a very young age, he began to work within offices of the Vatican, and eventually was ordained a priest and made a cardinal of Milan. One of the things he's most known for, though, however, is working during what's called the Counter-Reformation Age. Then the years following the Reformation, which Martin Luther instituted and began with his writings and his thoughts and theology, we see St. Charles ushering the church towards a better response, a more cogent response, a fuller response to some of the things that plagued the church at the time. And above all, what St. Charles saw most as being important was a growth in virtue, a growth in natural virtue, and a growth in theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And so he recognized in so many ways the importance of living that within his own life. And I think it's a model for us. So often we look at all of the problems in our lives, within our families, within the church even, and we're frustrated with them. We feel like we don't have anything that we can do to combat the things that plague our lives, the suffering that we encounter, or really the lack of virtue that we see. And St. Charles shows us that there's an important step in this whole plan, this whole process for renewal, and it begins with ourselves in relationship with the Lord. So he always sought to model it for his presbyterate, for the clergy assigned to him, where he later served as the Archbishop of Milano, of Milan in Italy. But also in his own life, he saw the importance of sort of stripping all of these things away and serving as the ultimate witness as a person of Christ, dedicated to Christ and serving his church. Uh, that came in a lot of different ways, in particular serving at the various councils in the church, but also just his devotion to the poor, to the sick, to the marginalized. During the plague in the 1570s, St. Charles sought to feed 60 to 70,000 people a day. And this is just one example of the many ways in which he tried to witness the gospel itself. And so I just want to encourage you, all of you, that your uncle doesn't have to be the Pope for you to do amazing things. Really, it just starts with one small act of charity done with great desire for others, a great love of others. These small acts, these small moments build on one another, and what they create is a desire to continue to grow and follow that path and lead others alongside it. May God bless and keep you.